Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you how you can make a Windows 11 bootable flash drive and you can do it on a Mac computer. Now, you may have a Windows computer that may not be operational at the moment because you need to install Windows on it, but you do have a Mac computer that's working. So I'm going to show you how you can take your flash drive and you can format this flash drive and then you can put all the Windows files on there so that you can boot this computer and get Windows installed. Now, the first thing you want to do is I would recommend that you get a new flash drive or one that you don't need any of the information on and we're going to go ahead and erase it. But I would also recommend that you get one that's at least 8 gigabytes, if not 16 or 32 gigabytes. And then also, this is just your preference, but I feel like it would be a lot better if you could get one that's USB 3.0. Now you can tell if it's USB 3.0 because it'll have the little bit of blue right there. And that's going to make it copy so much quicker so that you're not having to wait as long for all the files to copy onto the flash drive. So let's go over to the Mac and I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take in order to get your Windows 11 bootable flash drive running so that you can install Windows on this computer. Okay, so the first thing I want to let you know is there are other ways to do it than the way that I'm showing you. There's quite a few other programs. One of them is called ISO Burner. Now it works great, but it only works with Mac OS 10.13, which is High Sierra, up to Mac OS 14, which is Sonoma. And then there's another one called WinBoot Mate that will work with Mac OS 10.9, which was Mavericks. And then it'll work all the way up to Mac OS 14, which is also Sonoma. So either one of those programs is going to work great for you too. Now I'm going to show you the way that you can do it and it won't cost you anything but you will have to go in and put some commands in and you'll of course have to download the ISO file but you won't have to pay anything to do the steps I'm going to show you. Now there's one other way that you can do it and it still doesn't cost you anything. If you have boot camp, if you have an Intel computer, Intel Mac, you can use boot camp to make the Windows 11 installer. It'll work with Windows 10 as well but most people are going to Windows 11 now since they're going to go ahead and stop supporting Windows 10 in about a year and a half. So I'm just going to show you how to make the Windows 11 installer since everybody's going to that. But you could use Boot Camp to make your flash drive as well. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to open up Terminal. So we're going to go ahead and click on Spotlight at the top right and we're going to type in terminal and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to double click on it and that's going to open up terminal for us. Now we need to install a program called Homebrew. Now I've included a link for this down below in the video description. It'll take you to their website where you can copy the code if you want to to make it much easier to install homebrew so what you would do is go into chrome or firefox safari opera any of the browsers you want to use and then you're just going to copy and paste the link for homebrew and just press enter after you paste it in there now here is that command that you want to put in now, it's going to look a little bit different if you need to do it on an Apple Silicon Mac. Instead of it saying forward slash bin, forward slash bash, dash C, and then all this other stuff. Instead of saying all that, it's just going to start with the curl command. So it would look something like this. And then after you do the curl dash f s s l dash o install dot s h then you would run the forward slash bin forward slash bash space install dot s h but if you have an intel mac 
all you have to do is just copy this command right here. So you're going to click on this little icon right here, which will copy it to your clipboard. And then you're going to go back to the terminal. And then you're going to go to edit. And you're going to go to paste. And you're simply going to press enter. Now it will ask you, and it would on your Apple Silicon Mac as well, what your password is. So I'm going to go ahead and type my password in. And you won't see it while you're typing it in. And then you're going to press enter. And then it's going to go through and it's going to install everything. And so I'm going to go ahead and press enter to continue and give it just a moment to download and install. Now yours will also install Xcode. So if it comes up and it prompts you, do you want to install Xcode? You do want to install it because that's going to let Homebrew work perfectly. So let's give it just a moment to finish. Okay, so now that that is finished, we're going to install another utility that we need that will work with Homebrew. So we're going to type in brew space install space w-i-m-l-i-b. Now, don't worry again, I've included this down below in the description as well. I'm trying to make it easy for you so you don't have to remember all these. But we're going to type that in, and then again, if it asks you, go ahead and put in your password. Once it finishes installing that, then you're good to go. Now, if it's already installed like mine was, you don't have to reinstall it. It's good to go. But you would go ahead and do that brew install WIMLIB, and we're going to need that because we have to split up one of the files to make your bootable Windows 11 flash drive. Now, if you get an error when you're trying to install the WIMLIB, don't worry. There's two commands that you can run to try to fix that. The first one is eval and then quote dollar sign parentheses forward slash opt forward slash homebrew forward slash then forward slash brew and then a space shell env close parentheses close quote now don't worry again i included that link down below as well but i wanted you to know that that one should fix it now if it doesn't fix it go ahead and do the second one but after you have put that first one in try running brew space install space wim lib again and see if that works for you and then of course if it doesn't work then do the second command which is the echo quote eval dollar sign parentheses forward slash opt forward slash homebrew forward slash bin forward slash brew space shell env close parentheses quote greater than greater than dollar sign home forward slash period z profile now the reason that i did not recommend that one at first is because some people have said that it will cause your ZSH to load slower every time you open up terminal. So that's the reason I didn't recommend the second command automatically. I only recommended doing the first one. And then if it doesn't work for some reason, then go ahead and do the second one. But one or both of those will fix the problem with you not being able to install WimLib. So the next step we're going to take now that we've got Homebrew installed, which allowed us to install the WIM lib program, is now we can go and we can download Windows 11. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up here, type in, or you can go to Google or DuckDuckGo, wherever you want to, and we're going to type in Windows 11 ISO download. And then it's going to be almost every single time the very first result is from Microsoft. So I'm going to go to that one and my search results are with Google at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And then if you'll notice if I scroll down 
it has where I can download the disk image, which is an ISO. That's the file that we want to download. So I'm going to click on select the download and I'm going to say multi edition ISO for X64 devices and I'm going to click on download now. Now it takes you to a new page or updates that page and then it wants your language. So I'm going to choose English but you would want to choose your language and then click on confirm. Okay, now it's ready to go. So all we have to do is click on 64-bit download. And if you'll notice, it starts downloading right up here. So that's going to take just a little bit to finish downloading. But I'm going to go ahead and let that finish. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that ISO file and we're going to put it onto the flash drive. And I'm going to show you that it works by booting this computer to the flash drive of Windows 11. So let's give it just a few minutes to finish downloading and I'll show you how we're going to make that flash drive. Okay, so I just finished downloading the ISO file and you can tell that I have the ISO file downloaded because if I go to the finder and I go to downloads, there is my Windows 11 23H2 English X64 V2 ISO file. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this file and don't worry if it doesn't work for you what you can do is you can always control click on it and then tell it to open but it's going to open up that ISO file. So see mine's right here. And then what we want to do is we want to copy all that to our flash drive. But we have to format the flash drive first. So let's go ahead and put the flash drive into the computer. Give it just a moment and it should show up. There you go. Mine just showed up. But we've got a format. So I'm going to click on Spotlight again. Then I'm going to type in Disk. And it's going to give me the option of Disk Utility. So I'm going to double click it. And then if you'll notice there's my flash drive right there. Well, I don't need anything that's on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on USB SanDisk 3.2 Gen 1 Media. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase it. And then I'm going to give it a name. Now you can name yours whatever you want to. I'm going to call mine IT101. But you can call yours Windows 11. You can call it Windows. You can call it Installer. Anything you want. I'm going to name mine IT101 and then it wants to know what format. So I'm going to choose to do it as a MS-DOS FAT format and then it wants to know the scheme. Well I'm going to leave it as a master boot record but you can also do a GUID if you want to but I'm going to leave it as master boot record and then I'm going to click erase. Now again if this fails, I know I mentioned on quite a few videos, don't worry. Just go through and do it one more time. For some reason, certain flash drives have trouble formatting or racing the very first time. But if you go back through the steps again, like this one just had trouble, I'm going to click done and I'm going to do it one more time. And then it's going to go through without any problems. And there it goes. So now that flash drive is ready. So I'm going to click done. I'm going to close the disk utility by clicking the red circle, which is an X. And then there is my ISO file. And here's my flash drive. So the flash drive is empty at the moment. But we're going to copy everything from the ISO file except for one file. Now the reason we're not going to copy that one file initially is because that file is larger than 4 gigabytes. Well FAT32 can only support up to a 4 gigabyte file. Here I'll show you that file real quick. If I go in here and I go to sources and I scroll down if you'll notice right here that's a six gigabyte file. 
that's not going to work for FAT32. But don't worry. That's why we installed the WIMLIB. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy everything else from this ISO file over to the flash drive. So you can do it one of two ways. You can either select everything and then hold down the command button and unselect sources and then you can drag this over to the IT101 or Windows 11 or whatever you named your flash drive. Or I have one other command that you can use as well. Now that command is going to be rsync. Now rsync, and I've included, don't worry, I've included it down below in the description as well, but that's going to allow you to go ahead and it'll copy everything from this ISO file to your flash drive. So if I come over to the terminal and I go to edit and I type and I click on paste, there's everything right there. So it's going to exclude the install.wim and it's also going to copy it from the ISO file and it's going to put it on my volumes slash IT101. Now, if you named your something different than IT101, right here is where you would want to change that. But I'm going to leave mine just like that, and I'm going to go ahead and press Enter. Now, of course, this is going to take some time to go ahead and copy everything. So we're going to let that finish, and as soon as it gets finished, then I'm going to show you the next step which is how to go and get that install.wim file onto the flash drive but where it will also work because what we have to do is we have to split it into two files and then it's going to work fine so let's give that just a couple minutes and i'll be right back okay so it just finished copying everything so now I'm going to show you how we can take that install.wim file and put it on the flash drive. Now I made it easy again because I put this down in the video description. Everything I put down there for you. I was trying to make this as easy as possible. So all you have to do is just copy and paste. And so there's that command right there. It's wimlib-imageX. And then it's, you have to put a space, and then you put split, and then you put another space, and then you put where that install.wim file is, which I've already included for you, and then you're going to put in where it's going to go to, which is the volumes IT101, which again, you'd have to change if yours is different, and then sources install.swm, and then you would put a space and then put 4,000. Now the 4,000 is going to make sure it stays under that 4 gigabyte limit for FAT32. Now you can even make it 3,000 if you want to, but as long as you don't go over 4 gigabytes, it'll be fine. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at 4,000 and I'm going to press enter. And then as you can see, it gives me an update on splitting the WIM file. So let's give that just a little bit of time to finish splitting and putting all those files, or I guess it's two files, <laughs> onto the flash drive. And then as soon as that finishes, I'm going to show you that it's going to work on this Dell computer over here. So I'll be right back in just a few minutes. Okay, so as you can see, it finished splitting the two files. You can see right here, finish splitting, and then it shows you the install.wim file because it made a part one and a part two. So if you go over to your flash drive, mine just happens to be right here, and I go to sources, and I scroll down to install, there we go. There's an install.swm and an install2.swm. And the two combined is the same size as the one install file that's over here on the ISO file. See? 6.02 for install.wim. But over here, if you just have it split between the two, you've got a 4.04 .04 and a 1.93. So that's great. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the flash drive and we're going to eject it. So I'm going to take this IT101 and I'm going to click on the little arrow. Now that ejects the flash drive. So now I can take that flash drive as soon as it disappears, which it just did. I'm going to go ahead and take it and we're going to put it in this computer and I'm going to boot to it. So the very first thing you do, of course, is put it in the USB slot. And then on this computer, it's a Dell. I'm going to press F12 to go to the boot menu. So I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to go ahead and press F12. And now I'm going to select UEFI USB. Now, if that doesn't show up for yours, there may be some settings that you have to change in your BIOS. So that may be one of the reasons you can't boot to it or don't see it. So you might want to go in and adjust your BIOS settings. And then you want to go down and select it and then press enter. And then in just a moment, it's going to start bringing up the Windows 11 installer. There you go. So as you can see, there's Windows 11 installer. And I could go ahead and install this right onto this computer. But that is how you would make a Windows 11 bootable flash drive with your Mac computer. And this should work with even the Macs that have the Apple Silicone as well as the Intel Macs. If you do have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. I'll be more than happy to get back to you and help you with that. And if there's a video that you would like for me to create for you, please let me know that down below in the comments as well. And I will do my best to make a video for you. And as always, because you all do such a great job, if you can, hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep putting up more great content like how do I create a Windows 11 bootable flash drive with my Mac computer. And I'll be more than happy to keep putting up all this great content for you all. And I really appreciate you all. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Take care. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.